Hello again, and welcome back to Eclipse and Java for Total Beginners. In the last lesson, we started our book class. In this lesson, we're going to create a relationship between the book class and our person class. That way, we can tell which person has a book checked out. We're going to continue using the test first methodology. So let's get started. First, we'll open our book test class for editing and then add a new method called test get person. So we'll open up the project, we'll open up the test folder and open up book test, double click it to open for editing, double click to give ourselves some space. We're going to create a test method for the get person method, which we'll then write in a few minutes. As before, the test method will also, in effect, document what the get person method needs to do. So we'll start coding. First, we'll create the test method. It's public void. And then we're going to test get person. Next, we'll create a new book object called B2, and we'll give it a name, War and Peace. Then we'll create a new person object. So we have a person to work with. Then we're going to give the person a name, call him Elvis. So these first three lines should be familiar. We're just setting up uh, a couple of objects. Now we're going to type some more of the method. Okay, so this is the method that's going to say who the book is loaned to. In other words, the book is loaned to this person. So it's B2 set person. Notice that code assist can't help us because this method doesn't exist. And we get the red underline indicating a compile error again because the method doesn't exist. Now we're going to get the name of the person who has the book. So we're going to create a new person and again the code assist can't help us because it's a new method that does, hasn't been written yet. And then we're going to create a string variable test name to hold the name of this person. Finally, we'll put in our assert equal statement and we'll make sure that Elvis and our test name are equal. Now note that we are skipping over a subtle point here. We are not checking that the object P2 is equal to the object returned by the b2getPerson get method. In Java, checking whether objects are equal can get a little complicated. For our purposes, we are going to assume that all of our person objects have unique names. So we can just make sure we have the right person by checking the name. As we would expect, we have compile errors because the setPerson method and getPerson methods don't exist. So let's use quick fix to create those methods. So we'll click on the first one, hit control one, select create method, and we've created the set person method in our book class. Now we'll save that, go back, do the same thing for the get person, control one, create method, and again we have the get person. We'll save the book class, and that way the book test has the latest version of book compiled. So we'll save the book test class, and now we have no compile errors in our book test. Next, we'll go to the book class to complete the set and get methods. The set person method is very simple. It's just this person equals P2. So we're going to take the person object being passed in by the calling method 
which is P2, and set the person field in our book class to that. However, we have a problem. Person cannot be resolved or is not a field. So we haven't yet created the person field. We can hit Control-1 and let Quick Fix create that field for us. And we have a field person of type person. Notice that the class person has an uppercase P, whereas the field name person is lowercase. That's why we always capitalize classes and start other members such as fields and methods and variables with lowercase so we can quickly tell whether we're talking about a class or some other kind of variable. Also notice that Eclipse has created the person field using the word private. The words public and private are called access modifiers. Access modifiers control whether other classes can use a field or a method. There are four different access modifiers in Java and we'll discuss three of them briefly. Public means that any class can have access. Private means that only this class has access. If we leave the modifier off altogether, that means that access is limited to other classes in the same package. Since we want our book test class to have access to our fields in order to test the constructor, we'll leave off the access modifier. So we'll delete these. And save. Let's code the get person method. This is very, very simple. We just say return this person. And we're just getting the value of the person field with the get person. So we'll save. We'll go over to book test. And now let's run this by going run, run as J unit test. And it runs with no errors. Now at this point we have created a relationship between the book and person class. In this case, the book class is said to depend on the person class since the person class is named as a type inside the book class. So, the relationship is said to be one to one since one book can only have one reader at a time. In other words, we have one place to put a person inside our book class. Also, notice that we use person just like any other variable and we don't need an import statement to use person because it's inside the same package. Next, let's look at a couple things in the book test class. In the test get person method, notice that we're using two lines of code to get the name from the person field in the book class. We don't really need this or want this test person variable. We're just creating it here so we can use it down here to invoke the get name method. We can rewrite this in one line. First we'll use an eclipse trick that allows us to quickly comment and uncomment sections of code. If we just highlight a section of code we want to comment we can hit control forward slash and it places comments in front of that section of code and it's a toggle on and off so I can highlight it again and toggle it on and off. Now let's rewrite this in one line of code. We'll go string test name equals b2 get person and now when we put the dot there we get the methods that we would expect from the person class. So at this point the compiler knows that we've got a person so now we can run the get name on that person. We can interpret this line of code as follows. 
use the b2book object to invoke the get person method and that that will give us a person object so at this point we have a person object and then by putting the dot here we're running the get name method on that person object so this one line of code is doing exactly the same thing that these two lines of code were doing except that we don't have to create a test person object. Now let's rerun our test to make sure we didn't break anything. If I click over here, press rerun test, and it still works. Now at this point we have two test classes and we'll be adding more. It would be handy to be able to run all of the tests at the same time. We can do this just by creating a new test suite class. We'll create the test suite class by opening the pack package explorer, highlighting our package under the test folder, right clicking, new, other, go down to JUnit, and this time we'll select JUnit Test Suite, press Next. It's defaulting to include our two test classes in it, which is fine. We hit Finish, and we have a new class called All Tests. If we look at this test method, we see it's created a new object and it's added our two tests to the object. Now we don't really have to know all the details about how this works, but it's pretty obvious that if we add a new test, we can just add another line here to include that in the suite. So we can run this all test in the same way as before. We can go run, run as, JUnit test, and again, it succeeds this time, if we open it up, we can see that we ran the book test and the person test, and we can see all the individual tests as well. So now we can test our entire application just by pressing one button. In this lesson, we've created a relationship between the book and person class, and we've created a one button technique for testing our application. In the next lesson, We'll learn how to create and manage lists of objects using the Java ArrayList class. This is the end of Lesson 8. I'm Mark Dexter saying so long for now.